I just want to state for the record that this is our, you know, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're having conducting the April 13th select board meeting via Zoom. There's no public physical space that the select board will be meeting tonight. Um, and we have provided um, the access information with the agenda in different public places. Um, so um, it's our first meeting. I'm not sure. Hopefully it'll work. We'll see. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I've said what I need to say. So we're still waiting for Brian, but we're going to start um, start the meeting at six o'clock. Um, hopefully he'll join us. I saw his car across the road, so I know he's home. But he said he was doing that from the garage. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, maybe, hopefully he's driven back to the garage. Um, so it's uh, six o'clock. Um, I'd like to open the meeting. Um, are there any adjustments to the to the meeting for tonight? No, not for me. Okay. So um, one thing that I want to do first is um, I realized after our the select board meetings, sit, usually after the first meeting, after the uh, town meeting, we kind of go through the select board governance, choose a chair, um, et cetera. And I neglected to do that this mm -hmm. time around. Um, I just kind of continued in my role as the chair. So um, I wanted to offer to the other select board members the opportunity to do that. Um, would you like to be the chair, Paul? Not today. Not today, okay. <laughs> so um, usually Brian also denies or chooses not to be a chair. So um, I will assume that I will continue as the select sure. board chair, okay. Um, so is there any, is there any public comment at all from, no? Okay. So I would make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, and then I would make a motion that we approve the minutes from the March 23rd, 2020 meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So um, next on the agenda um, is a, an idea for a Woodbury community project that Cindy Gordon um, talked to me about uh, last week. Um, so I invited her to come to and meet us, um, meet with us on the select board meeting. So Cindy, if you want to unmute yourself, um, I'll give you the, the, the uh, monitor screen. Okay. Um. So I have an idea. Um, it was originally just going to be me and some friends, but then it was me and the PTO, and now it's me and you guys <laughs> in the town, just because um, there's some money involved and we weren't sure how what we wanted to do with it. So uh, it's just an idea that could spread some cheer in the town, um, because right now nobody really knows what to do, and there's a lot of people that are kind of lonely and. There, we have a lot of backwoods people that are kind of isolated and just um, just kind of alone. So I thought maybe we could buy some little windmills and um, other people could take them and we could put them in people's yards just as a little cheer up sort of thing, just something small. And we could just get a bunch of them and you could just a uh, little windmill, windmill your neighbor and put it either by their mailbox or by their door or something and it moves and so it's kind of a, a distraction or something that moves and so I thought well we could buy them locally because then we would kill two birds with one stone we would support somebody local and we would cheer our Woodbury neighbors up so I called the whistle in Hardwick and they have them there uh, the whistle carries high quality things. They don't carry the cheap stuff. And so I wasn't sure what to expect. And they have four different sizes of them. The smallest being you can put in your drink and the biggest ones being uh, fairly large, uh, 18 inches or 24 inches wide, I think. And uh, so I was really just going for what's reasonably priced 
and the most reasonable um, size that we would get cost three dollars each and they're they're thick they're nice they're on wooden dowels or excuse me they're not on wooden dowels the more expensive ones were and so they're plastic they're not the cheapy ones that you see at the grocery store and i realized that three dollars a piece is quite a bit however we could get them just to support the store and i also did look up what the cheapy ones cost on amazon um the cheap ones uh, they cost about a dollar a piece and so that's about three times as much <laughs> to get them locally but we would be supporting a store and a member of the pto suggested maybe we could do both we could support the store to a reasonable amount and then we could buy the rest on amazon because <laughs> there's a lot of people in woodbury and if one like i would want to put 10 or 20 of them out and then that would knock out 10 or 20 so if we got 100 that really wouldn't be that many people being involved and so of course at three dollars a piece that's a lot of money question and so so that's just an idea just i thought i'd throw it out there and see what you thought i have a question I wonder. sorry go ahead how many total do you think we would need cindy well, I, I don't know. See, that's the thing. I thought, well, a hundred only, uh, there wouldn't be that many people that would really be able, let's just say a person wanted to put 10 of them in their neighbor's yards. That's, a, that's only 10 people that are able to do it. And, you know, we could have a box of them like a, on the porch of the clerk's office or something. So you could grab as many as you wanted to use, but still that's kind of limiting if you want to do a whole bunch like I would want to do. <laughs> so um, I don't know, but I know that at two ninety five, it would cost $300 for a hundred of them. But if we went with the Amazon route, we could get some that um, the brand that is on Amazon is Slinky. And those are the kind we have in my house because we got them from Tops about four years ago and they they're indestructible, <laughs> they're cheap, but they have, my kids hit things with them. They've left them out in the yard for weeks at a time. They just don't die. <laughs> We've had them forever and they don't break. So, and they're the, they're the ones with silver on them, you know, the cheap ones. So I, I didn't know if maybe we could do a mix of them or you know, some, somehow support the whistle because he said they're, they're really suffering. And I thought, well, that'd be cool if we could do that. And I also have some um, families or people in Woodbury that said that they'd be willing to donate some money towards it too, if we did that. Diana, did you have a question? I just wondered if, if uh, Cindy, maybe you had looked around for any uh, opportunities or any patterns to make them, to make pinwheels, they're not that, complicated but they're not complicated but you would really have to put some a lot of time and energy into yeah. doing that and it would have to be one person doing it at home <laughs> and <laughs> i would i i am perfectly able to do it but i can't right now <laughs> i just it, um well you'd have to have some kind of heavy really heavy paper or yeah and you have to buy the, the, the plastic and punch the holes and the dowels or the stick and yeah. it would probably cost you about three dollars to make <laughs> just <laughs> yeah it would almost not be worth buying the materials to buy to make them so but, um i think it was a hundred oh, you're frozen mm -hmm. michael fro michael froze up on us He's frozen <laughs> Oh, and one thing, um, since you're frozen, the whistle also said they come in packs of 45. The $3 ones? Yep. Oh. Yeah, the $5 ones have a wooden dowel, yeah. but I didn't think $5 was something that we would want to do. Is this something you, there's a budget for in, in the PTO or something? So you're asking for money or? Well, both. I'm presenting an idea that I thought would be fun for everybody. Yeah. If the town wanted to go along with it and make it a thing, 
And also, yes, if you're willing to fund some of it, mm -hmm. sure. I'm not an entity, I'm just a person. Mm -hmm. And so if you funded it, it would really go to me so that I could purchase them. <laughs> that's, that's really all that would happen. Mm -hmm. And I would probably, I was planning on paying for some of them anyway, so. There's Michael back. Oh, yay, you froze. You're okay. muted, Mike. Unmute, Mike. My computer cut out again. I, um, I don't, I'm not sure why I was starting to dial in again. Um, you all froze and, and I was moving in my little box, but. Um, I, I was having a stare down with you and I, and I was going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, did you hear my question? Did I, did you hear my question? No. So, um, Cindy, when we, when we spoke last week, um, you mentioned that the Whistle Emporium, if we bought a certain number that, and I thought it was a hundred, that he would give us a, um, he would charge, we could get them for a hundred and eighty dollars. Well, that's what I thought he said, but apparently we had some miscommunication. He thought okay. I was, he thought I was asking, I, something completely different than I was asking. <laughs> okay. And so he gave me the hundred eighty three dollars, and I took that as that's what. A hundred would cost with a vendor discount, but that's not at all what he was saying. Okay, he was right, so. he was talking about splitting it up between. He thought I was yeah, sorry. <laughs> so when I called him back a few days ago, um, he said, "Oh no, that's not what I said at all." And I said, oh, "Sorry." Okay. So I said, "Oh darn!" <laughs> I was kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. But he said he did say he could give us a discount, but he also said that they're suffering, and I right. just. You know, for the few dollars you could give us a discount for, that's just, it just, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, we also have to be conscious of our own budget. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, if, I, I'm not opposed to doing this, but um, I don't want to spend a lot of money. I'm thinking that at the most, and I would kind of defer to Brandy to, for what kind of, um, budget item we could put it under, but you know, I would I would be willing to go, like maybe two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars, um, five hundred at the very most. Um, and I think you know, to for somebody to take ten of them and put them on one person's lawn, that seems a little excessive. Maybe we could limit how many are on each lawn so that yeah. you or know, <laughs> one and, per lawn. <laughs> well, even even that. I mean, we have. What eight hundred or nine hundred people in town? So um, yeah, not everybody has a lawn, I guess. But and we don't have to do it. It was just an idea. Yeah, so, no. I mean, what do I, what do our other select board members think of that? I'm not objecting on in on the face of the idea. No. Mm -hmm. Or do you? Know, I didn't a, hear all of it, so I wasn't sure of the whole deal. Okay. <laughs> Could you give Brian a brief synopsis, Cindy? Yeah. I came or, on late. Yeah. If you have I, I've got to go, guys. Right. Oh. See you, Skip. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Right. Thanks, sir. Bye, Skip. Thank you. But this could also be maybe a catalyst for somebody else to come up with something else that's really cool that would be <clears throat> worth spending the same money on. You know, like a daffodil have, bulbs. Yeah. But somebody had said that in the PTO meeting, but they wouldn't come up till next year. You'd have to plant them in the fall. Yeah. yeah. And that what is it again that you guys were going to do? Windmills. Uh, windmill. little, little, little pinwheel windmills. And we could make it a thing so that people know why there's a windmill in their yard. <laughs> yeah. So just in everybody's yard? Yeah. 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 Just a fun little thing. Mm -hmm. But um, we would have to buy them. That's the, that's the kicker. And we would have to buy enough to matter. So maybe there's something else that would be neat to do, like little signs or balloons or something fun that you could tag the backwoods people with and say, hey, you know, we know you're alone and, and we remember you. How many? Not everybody, not everybody has screaming children surrounding them every day, <laughs> you know, so they're alone or, or need a little morale. Maybe you could do some fundraising i'll give you 20 bucks okay <laughs> private members private people yeah that would be a good way to do it 
Anybody else? Raise your uh, hands. I'm unemployed <laughs> right at the moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not everybody I, I, you know, the town could chip in some and maybe we that could get us started and we could do some fundraising. So if we want more. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why don't I make a motion for $250? Okay. Uh, I'll second I would, that then. Okay. So, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I think, you know, as much as I'd like to help out the Whistle Emporium, um, we're going to get the best deal through Amazon, which yeah, I, I think the Amazon. Like. Yeah. yeah, it's probably where she buys her stuff anyways. And uh, you can contact me about a donation too, Cindy, too. Right. We could <laughs> we could put something out. We could put something out on Front Porch Forum and on the website about donations for this project um, and see what happens. OK. All right. All right. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening. The and I also have another idea. Can I throw it out there? Sure. <laughs> I thought I what I have seen people do for birthdays is create a car parade past the person's house and everybody whistles and they honk and and it's exciting. So I thought maybe we could every weekend we could do a small section of town and we could decorate our cars, we could get in our cars. And we could all drive slowly past people's houses and honk and wave and create a ruckus past someone's house, just enough for them to get to peek out their window <laughs> and, and say, what's going on? Just a distraction, just something. And if we announce that it's happening that day, then people might anticipate it and look forward to something because right so now- So that's just a person organizing it type thing. Yeah, yeah. but I just thought, do you think that's a good idea? <laughs> They're happening all over the place. We haven't had any requests, but the, we, the fire department's been doing it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to do if everybody was willing to be silly. And After silly. mud season. Right. <laughs> that's true. Would you, would you be willing to be the organizer of that? Yeah, sure. You won. <laughs> we just voted you in. Yay, I win. I'm all in favor. <laughs> just won. <laughs> okay, so maybe you'll see something about that on front porch. All right, sure. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. All right, have a good night. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Um, okay. Okay, so next on the agenda, um, I know um, I just, I had to call Greg about 4.30. Um, there's a culvert washing out up on East Hill. Dana Hoppy called me. So um, he is probably out on that call right now. Um, he was gonna join us. Although Leaf mentioned that there was somebody with an iPad trying to connect. That was Cindy. That was Cindy, okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, I guess I'll, I'll start out. I mean, we, we kind of got to stick to schedule here um, just be, for people that are coming in. Um, so I'm going to kind of lead us through the town highway report. I was really hoping that Greg could be here and, and um, maybe he will join us eventually, but probably too late. Um, so the first item on the agenda is the old Quarry Road. Um, and as the select board members know, I, um, Coleman Parker has appealed um, the decision that we made. So um, I found that out last Friday when I sent an email to the Washington S County Superior Court because I hadn't heard anything. I wanted to just make sure that one way or the other, whether there was a, an appeal or not. And, and uh, the woman there did email me back and said, yes, there was an appeal. Um, so I talked um, that same day, I emailed um, our town lawyer, Michael Tarrant, who's been working with us on that. And um, at this point, what the town needs to do, and, and it, I'll undertake that this week, is to send um, Coleman a list of all of the people that we sent notices to for the two hearings that we had. He has to send those people uh, notices of the appeal at the, in the Superior Court. And then the other thing that that we have to do is we have to send the records, which is basically any material that was used in the hearings, the minutes, the notices. Um, we have to send that to the Superior Court. Um, 
and then um, and then the the process begins. And so you know the big question is, here we go, uh, spending money on lawyers. Um, and you know, Michael warned us that you know this could rack up to be a lot of money. Um, so um, uh, you know we could. Coleman's the two grievances that he had in the appeal. Um, let me find that. Was that uh, that he didn't feel that the town proved the necessity of laying out that spur, and he also felt that um, that the amount that we offered him was inadequate. So the appeal is based on false evidence for necessity. So I'm not sure what he means by false evidence um, and inadequate damages offered. So um, it's really going to be incumbent on him to prove that in court. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we're um, in a position of just providing the information and just sit there and wait for him to make his case. So should we take that? I mean, obviously, I think we have to provide the records anyway. Just yes. for the, so should we kind of take that first step and just see <laughs> how much of a quagmire we're getting into and, um, and then maybe rethink this or I'm, I'm wondering what the select board members think of that. I think we should still move forward. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I want to see what the, uh, just, just appealing with the little bit of information he has doesn't really tell us. I mean, he's going to have to prove in court that the uh, funding we offered was inadequate. And he's okay. going to have to prove in court based on the evidence which was uh, looked at in our hearings. He's got mm -hmm. that evidence to show how there was either misrepresentations or something, uh, which I don't have any idea what he's up saying. I know when, um, when we, um, did the, the second um, uh, hearing, he mentioned that he felt there were a lot of um, inaccuracies in the uh, meeting minutes from the first hearing. Um, and obviously- yeah, It's gonna be incumbent on him to prove that. Prove that, right. And we have the record, we have both recordings. Um, I, I've copied them onto a CD, which I'll send to the court. Yep. And the, you know, the minutes that I made were pretty, pretty exact to, you know, I didn't put anything in there that didn't get stated in the, um, no, I feel good about our side. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel it's pretty solid. I mean, okay. I don't know he's going to use an appraisal or whatever on the money. I don't know how he's going to prove that. But that's yeah. all we don't have to disprove it. So, right. well, he did in the first hearing, he asked for $5,000. Right. And that'll be, he'll have to convince a judge that that's fair. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we move forward still. Okay. Brandy, did I'll, you have a comment? I Did you want to have weigh in on this at all? Uh, I saw no. you, I saw the light go around your <laughs> thing once. <laughs> it's it's just that yeah, the spending we've spent almost um 11,000 as is right now. Really? We spent that much. Yeah, once and that was factoring in that he was going to agree to accept the offer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, so that would be considering adding in the twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I, I think that we we will take a first step and see um, how muddy the water is. <laughs> Michael. Yes, Diana. If you want me to organize your files into something to be submitted, I willing to do that make the copies in that okay i have everything on the computer i have a file already a paper copy and i and in fact i think there is a file down there's in the a, town office yeah. yeah there's a binder in the vault that's complete yeah. of expenses so, um, <clears throat> um so maybe um i guess maybe i'll stop by at the town office um, probably tomorrow um i have the day pretty much open and we'll see what's in there. I know you don't have any CDs yet. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I could, well, I'll- Bring down what you what, have and we'll yeah. see what we have. I think I made pop paper copies of everything that I have digitally. Um, so, um, so I think- I kind of feel it. that Coleman still hasn't spent any money on this. He's just trying to harass us with his verbal yeah, he well, had to write a two hundred and something dollar check for the two hundred ninety five dollars he spent so far, as far as I know, because he had to pay the court that to file the. You'll have to bring evidence to court because I, I can tell you the judge isn't going to just right. take his say. So he's going to have to get an appraisal. He's going to have to have some evidence. 
Because we're, luckily, as the attorney said, we're on the receiving end. We don't have to prove or disprove anything. Right. Made our finding and mm -hmm. it's his yeah. job to say it's wrong yeah. and provide evidence. Yeah. So I will, do we, should we vote to proceed on this? What's, what's your thought? I mean, we've, well, sounds like we're more option. Do hmm? you have another option? Uh, just to offer Maybe him more money. Another, another more money. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't know how you fix the record. That problem is if he, if it was just right. the money, the record does, I don't have, know to... does have two challenges for us. Yeah. Right. So, so if he's saying there's inaccuracies in the record, then we really have. It's to, to me, it's like uh, there's no option. We've gone down this road. Now we're on the road. Okay. So. All right. So I would make a motion that we proceed um, with. Uh, pursuing this appeal um, in the Washington County Superior Court. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Um, aye, okay. And um, so I will put the record together tomorrow um, with Diana's help and we'll get that to the Washington County Superior Court. I will send the list of people that uh, we sent notices to, to Coleman Parker, um, both uh, via email and also <coughs> in a in a paper copy as a postal letter. Um, the, our lawyer said it didn't need to be certified. Um, and then I will check in with our lawyer. Um, yeah, because this has, could be a while. The courts are all shut down. It'll, it'll be a next while. Next month or so, and then who knows how long it'll take to get a, I think it's just gonna be a judge's hearing. Yeah, he mentioned that it probably wouldn't happen until May or, you know, at the end of May or into June yeah. or who knows when, so yeah. I also want to apologize for missing that email. I saw okay. it go by, but mm -hmm. it's just been too much. Okay. Yeah. Too many emails okay. lately. Yep. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, so that's that um, agenda item. So, Paul, is there anything new um, on the Village Street Project at all? With no, just waiting. I haven't. I'm gonna. I should have done it today. I didn't get to it. I emailed the engineer to see where he is on the road design. I guess okay. looking for some direction. Should I? finish putting this uh, paving proposal together so that we can get it out to bid. My gut feel is we probably should, so we're not gonna miss yeah. our summer. Yeah, I, I would suggest that we, with the paving that with the, in the RFP, um, that we include both the Village Common and the, the road. bottom of yep. Valley Lake Road. Okay, so I, I'll have that for next time. Okay, yep. I know one of the questions was the old culvert um, at the, you know, between the old, the new old store right. and uh, the annex building, and I found the email from Jaron Board when he looked at the culvert um, up on Bailey Bridge Road, and he said that um, you know there was no imminent danger with it, okay. that it was something that we should probably keep in mind to replace. But um, so I think we would be good. I think we'll be okay. okay. At, um, with the and that may be a future thing. If we're, if I'm anticipating, are those going to be any? Uh, grant funding available, or is that all on our own because of the small roads there on those culvert projects? Uh, no, there pr there probably would be grant funding. There okay. would be probably three of them. There would be Bailey Bridge, Church Street, sure. and Valley okay. Lake. So, um, so that may be yeah. a future to work on uh, mm -hmm. grant something. proposal, either to do all three at the same time or one a year over a few right. years or something. Yep. But they do. They are looking like they're going to be in need. They're they're looking kind of sad. Yeah, kind of a little sad. Chewed up. I'll have that proposal ready. Uh, and I'll get it to, to, to you all before the next meeting so we can get it out to bid. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so I would like to have one last discussion about the grader and, you know, sort of related to that, the, um, the replacement for one of the, the plow trucks. Um, you know, I've kind of, um, we were able to have a, th a third party do an inspection on it, a man named Rick. Um, I don't have, I have LaRue for his last name, but I don't think that's right. He's a he's an old um, John Deere grader mechanic, used to work for Nortrax and now was on his own. He and Greg went and looked at the grader um, and the uh, Rick <laughs> stated to Greg that he would be able to do all of the repairs. Um, the ones that Nortrax was going to do, and I, um, let's see, probably almost half, or even less, more than half of what um, the twenty-six thousand that Nortrax was was asking to do that. So, um, just I'm just going to run through some numbers uh, right at the moment for us to 
uh, purchase that grader and do all the repairs on it, buy the new tires um, and new um, carbide bits, um, which we would have to get for the old grader also. Um, it comes to um, about $75,000. Um, so Nortrex is asking us $68,000 um, and they're giving us a trade-in of $16,000, which brings the, the price for the grader down to $52,000. Rick has given us an estimate of for parts and repairs for what he would do on the, the um, John Deere grader at $10,000. So that brings it up to $62,000. And the road crew repairs, um, plus the tires come to about $10,000. So that's where the $72,000 comes from. Or 75, I thought you had 75. Yeah, 75, um, that would also include the, um, the carbide bits. Okay. Those are, those are kind of in the fiscal year 21 budget for the present grader that we have too. Um, so um, about $4,000 for the, for the bit. So we would be spending those either way. Um, yeah, I'm not quite ready to buy a grader myself. I'm not sure where okay. Paul is, but I'd like to wait at least into the summer more where we can spend more time looking at ours, looking at the options. It is okay. a chunk of money. Ours yep. is in good shape. You know, maybe a truck is more important than a grader. You know, I well, just, I'd like to look it over more. Greg has definitely, you know, the priority for Greg is a truck. Um, yeah. He did mention that um, the grader will probably need some repairs. I don't know whether it's this summer, but sometime in the near future. Um, and he could explain this a lot better than I could, but he's talking about the uh, turntable, which I have a feeling is for the, the blade. The, the mold board, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's getting kind of worn and loose. Um, so that would need to be repaired. Um, and there are a number of pistons that are leaking that would need to be repaired. So he's thinking that in the next um, year or two that we would probably be putting about $10,000 into that grader to keep it running. Um, yeah, and that's not too bad for me. Right. And especially, okay. like you said, it's, the other one's a big chunk. Yep, it is a big chunk. grader has served us well, it can do the mm -hmm. job. It, yep. A bigger one is obviously nicer, but you know, <laughs> yep. it, you know money, money, yep. money. You know, and, uh, yeah, and I'm I'm fine with that too, and the the road crew is too. You know, they just felt that the other grader would be a little bit more productive. Yeah. I'm I'm leaning toward Brian. I mean, I initially really liked the idea, but uh, the other grader we have is currently okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we just put you know seven or eight thousand dollars worth of tires on it last summer. Yeah. Um, you know, talking, it looked like we could like it was interested in getting the rock the road ripper on the front for fifteen hundred mm -hmm. bucks or whatever it is, and maybe doing that. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd be leaning toward, you know, spend some money, make the repairs to this grader. I, I think um, the, our current grader, I think, I, I think we need to start formulating a plan on how we're going to replace these things. One, one of my yeah. issues with, with all of the purchasing is it, it seems haphazard to me. We don't really have a plan. Right. You know, it's like I need a truck, I need a grader. You know, um, we should have a plan for that, looking at how much we're spending on repairs. Um, mm -hmm what this life cycle of these things is. Again, I don't want to be married, you have to replace something on a certain day either, but uh, second problem I got with the grades, I'm not sure this is just a great a great deal because um, it, it is an old grader, um, mm -hmm. not as old as what we have, but it needs a lot of work after we buy it. And one of my problems is like, I, I'm not sure the deal's well because if it was worth fixing, uh, Nortrax would fix it and sell it to us. Um, but I feel like they think they're gonna have too much in it which is why they'll sell it to you unrepaired and then you've got to repair it. You end up having right. too much in it. Yeah. So if it, you know, if, the, if, the, if it was in good shape and you could buy it for, for 60 or 50, you know, okay, great deal. But you know, we got to put quite a bit of money in it afterwards. Yeah. That's kind of my issue. No, that's, and you know, Greg just became, he, you know, he's aware that the select board has been talking for a few years about having to replace yeah. the grader. And when this, deal you know turned up next door he just yep. no, understood wanted us to know about it so but i think we should come up with a plan because we know right. the grader is not going to last forever so mm -hmm. whether it's five years from now ten years from now eight years from now we need to have power and that goes back to our our uh, uh capital fund yeah. of making sure we've adequately funded that to say look we understand that this grader's got to be replaced in five years maybe i don't know yeah um because i i know they're not going to last forever i know like Brian, it was just a few pistons and maybe some turn, you know, four or five thousand, ten even is fine. 
But yeah. you know, if you start doing that every year, then you might as well go buy a gray hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you will come well, to think- that eventually. I think, um, you know, I've been just kind of playing around with the HERF fund some, and, um, you know, we'll be putting a, a significant amount of money into it every year. So, you know, I think we'll do, what we need to do is um, kind of work out this, the HERF fund to see what kind of money we've got, um, you know, yep. based on what we're replacing. And I think that'll give us a good idea of, of you know, working out a, a purchasing schedule too. Even going after a used grader, uh, which may be what we're going to do with Richard. There's there's opportunity, but your position becomes so much stronger once you're paying cash to be right. the person in charge of the deal. When we're having to accept a less than great deal and then go borrow money to do it, I'd rather be standing there with a hundred or hundred fifty thousand in cash in my hand, walking up and say, "Hey, we're here. This is what we got. Take it or leave yeah. it." You'll do way better. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and I I have a feeling we'll never buy a new grader. So probably not for three hundred. I think he's about here paid three fifty or three seventy five. Right, three, that's that's the asking price I hear. But yeah. if we have cash and we go looking, I think we'll find something that would really mm-hmm. do that. I do too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So grader is a done deal. Let's forget that. What about we still need to discuss truck replacements? If we want to try to spread the trucks out. Um, the purchases of them, you know, if we wait two years I mean, the, on replacing one truck, then we're just pushing another two or three years out on the other truck. It just feels like it's getting too far, too far out. Um, and, you know, this, we would need to make a, if we want to replace the truck for fiscal year 22, we need to make a commitment to, um, and you know, go through a bidding process this summer. Uh, you know, we were told last year when we um, originally scheduled replacing a truck that you have to kind of um, put in your um, offer or your request a year ahead of time so that they have time to. So I think we would, you know, if, if we're going to replace um, one of the trucks soon, you know, I think trying to go two more. Winters, that would be, I, I think you were mentioning nine winters that Hardwick does. Um, yeah, the other, t- I just checked with East Mount there, it's nine winters typically. So we're just finished winter seven. If we yep. waited and bought it, didn't order this summer, ordered the following summer, that would get nine winters on the truck. Okay, but then if we wait another two or three years for the second truck, that would be like 10 or 12 winters. Sure, one will go long, right? The other one's a 14, right? We had a 13 and a 14. And so yeah. the other truck's got six winters on it, right? I think they both were there the same winter. Do you remember, Brian? I wasn't on the select board then. I don't. They're two different years, but yeah. They, they are two different years. Same yeah. year cycle. Okay. So I, I think we have some time to keep considering that one. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, you know, we, I'd like to hear more. We got the 4,900 thing. I just want to hear more okay. of a, see, I'm, I'm into okay. more getting a plan together because okay. we had five plow right. trucks. Um, one of them has been down for over a month down at, at uh, Donuts, because I just talked to yeah. Greg about it. So, so I'm just not sure we need all that stuff. You know what I mean? And so, right. if we come, I'm not saying he does or he doesn't. I don't want to question Greg because he's not here about it. Um, right. But maybe it makes sense okay. to just we, we got some time to think about that. Okay. Other ten wheeler right now. Okay. So let's let's um, let's table that for the moment. Um, so the um, 4900. Um, let's see. Let me find the material on that. Uh, so um, passive is um, has offered to give us twenty thousand dollars for um, for the uh, claim to replace you know as insurance money for the forty nine hundred that covers the uh, La Roche uh, towing um, also so there's seventeen thousand that they've offered to you know towards the truck um, and then the th- three uh, the three thousand five hundred dollars for the towing. Um, so they would now we've got a deductible too, right? Yeah, uh, let's see. We have a thousand dollar deductible, I believe. Thousand yeah. dollar deductible. So we get sixteen, right? Yeah. So um, one thought that Greg had, and again, you know, we we probably shouldn't even discuss this tonight, but I'll just mention it. Um, you know, one of the thoughts he had was that he he saw a international same truck a little bit newer that that the you know, the road crew could take the engine and the transmission out of the 4,900 that's total, it's basically totaled. 
um, and put it into a, a truck. Um, he saw a truck for sale for $2,000 on Vermont Craigslist. Um, it, the really? motor was shot. And uh, so, you know, he can hang on to it for, this is just, I don't even want to discuss it really. Just no, I got it, yeah. <laughs> so he's, one thought he had was, is that we try to buy a used truck and use the parts from the other one to fix up a functioning truck. Um, and, he, and he thinks that we could do it within the, the sixteen or seventeen thousand dollars that we're getting um, for the forty nine hundred. The yeah. other, the other option is to take the money, um, and um, they'll take the passive. We'll will sell the truck for salvage. Um, they've already had some bids on it, um, and then we'll just have that money to to do. You know, if we're going to try to get another something else to replace that with or not. Um, the main thing that Greg really wanted to have that 4,900 for or something comparable is to, um, for the chlorine, chloride tank in the summertime. He do, really oh. doesn't want to put a chloride tank in either the low pro or the other two trucks just because of the rust issue. Um, so, so, so my thought on this, you can run this by Greg, wish he was here to talk about it. I, I think we have too many dump trucks. We need to ditch one. I just soon see that one go bye bye, and um, I would rather see us take that money, get rid of that rusted out 550, and maybe get something uh, flatbed style where we could put a sander in that that could be used in the summer, and with the flatbed off. Um, that being said, is that doesn't help him with his chloride. So I looked around. Uh, Eastmont Player and Callus both have chloride trailers. The That's tank what on the trailer, so you're not putting it in a dump body, which then gets rid of a truck in the fleet. And as we discovered in the fire department, you save a lot of money by removing one vehicle out of the fleet. It saved uh, about 30 to 40,000 a year for the taxpayers. Yeah. So that's kind of what I was leaning toward is, you know, I'm willing to be convinced. I just, you know, I just, um, <laughs> I just think that'd be a better road to go down is that we get that really tired 550 to get something a similar size four wheel drive with a plow and a flatbed. They can use that small truck to plow the village, the fire station, mm -hmm. the school, the town offices, put the uh, plastic sander in the back and salt with that. But maybe I'm completely wrong. I mean, I'd just love to hear his okay. side of it. But. Well, I think um, to be discussed. We'll yeah, yeah. So I think there's options. Yeah, yeah. So we'll explore options. Um, um, okay. Um, so next on the road, um, highway department uh, report. So. Greg did put together a work plan. I, I sent it to you guys digitally. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, he's not here to discuss it, um, but I think um, what we could do is, um, here's a plan that he has come up with. Um, if there are things that we would like to see on there that aren't on there, um, we can talk to him about it, or um, you, we could, you know, I, I'm willing to take notes right now if you want um, to, to I didn't have to catch, I didn't see that on my, email yet mike so i don't have it in front of me so okay, I've got I, I think i sent it out this morning i've got a couple comments I, I spent a little bit of time on it today one of the one of the issues i have is there's way more ditching in the plan mileage wise than we have berm removal yeah so just doing a quick add up here um, i'm only seeing 2.7 so three four you know i'm only seeing maybe three to four miles of mm -hmm. berm removal we've got 30 some miles of road and, and that to me doesn't really meet what we asked for okay we asked for a shift right. in my view from this construction work to and, and it may well need to be done i'm not arguing the point that the ditching doesn't need to be done in the culvert right. but i need to see more there's there's a uh, a lot of the berm removal should be able to be done with the grader yeah. the bucket loader and a dump truck mm -hmm. okay uh, you know, that's my, I don't know, that's why, again, I'd be glad to discuss it with Greg, but I just, I don't see that it, and again, you guys can weigh in, but it didn't meet what we really asked for. Right, I thought it was kind of shy of berm removal also. And on the brush cutting, um, I don't understand the, the uh, most of the roads that they're looking to do brush cutting on are, you know, houses, with, roads with three or four houses on them. When, right. You can drive around to the uh, much busy, like County Road's a very busy road and the brush is hanging over. We're not looking okay. at that. So that, that, again, questions I would ask Greg if he was here. Okay. I don't see that it meets our, at least what I, I don't know, I'm not one to put you, words in you guys' mouth, but it doesn't seem to meet yeah. what we kind of gave as a direction. I mean, we okay. need to start attacking 
15 or 20 miles of road berms every year. You know, if we're going to yeah. get this done because, and then see to it that future grading, like this, my road is rebuilt to make sure when they come and do the final road shaping that those berms are gone. Yeah. Okay. Just keep up what we've done. And I'm not saying he's not doing it. It's just, um, I, I think we should do a, more of the berm removal and brush cutting if we're so far behind. Okay. All right. I w I'll mention that to him. Um, yeah, I, I know the culverts, um, he did have them listed by priority and whether he would get to them all or not is... Um, is uh, and I'd be interested to see if, if we package those culverts up as a project deal, what we get on a bid price, just right. to have one person come in and change them. Yeah. Just because, again, I'm thinking of his time to do other maintenance work. Yeah. Just as a maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll share that with him and, um, you know, he maybe he'll get in touch with you to talk more. Yeah, about that's fine. It. I won't have to talk about it because I just, yeah. again, I, I don't want to, I, I understand that he knows what's going on and I'm not questioning that at all. Right. Because we've got, with the amount of money, in my opinion, that we're spending, we've got to start dealing with these firms mm -hmm. because that's what's making all our gravel disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so just a quick, um, you know, I was planning on Greg giving the spring roads update, but you get to do it now. Um, yeah, the mud, you know, I've been out, I'm, I'm on my beaver runs now, which is Cranberry Meadow Road, Dog Pond Road, and part of County Road. Um, but uh, I don't see a lot of mud yet, but definitely a lot of potholes. Um, yeah, so I know they've been up on, do, yeah. yeah, they've patched, um, you know, some kind of ruddy, muddy spots. Um, you know, last year we thought we had gotten through mud season and then, um, there was a second wave, so kind of wonder. That's why I'm, I'm not saying I think it looks pretty good right now. I'm just hoping we yeah. don't have a repeat. Yeah, mud wise, it they you know it looks pretty good, but there definitely are a lot of potholes. Right. Um, so, um, all right. So let's let's move. Uh, one more quick thing. One more. Um, okay. Uh, since we're kind of uh, working on that, keeping the greater, can we have Greg get a quote to get a? Uh, set of those ripper tines put on the front of the existing grader. Okay. Um, what do you think about? I didn't get to talk to you about it, Brian or, or Michael on that, just because uh, that would supposedly help them tear those potholes up. Right. Um, I know. Make grading easier. Service out of it. So let's get a quote if you guys don't object to it. Yep. Okay. I know when I mentioned that to Grizz, <coughs> he felt that the uh, grader didn't have the power to to have that type of tool and use it. So, um, so I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the answer to it either, but I, I did talk I down at the town garage a while ago, I think when we were first talking about graders or when that, I think when that subject first came up um, after uh, one of our meetings with Lynn, um, you know, Grizz just, you know, it's not four wheel drive. He, he felt that the, you know, if you tried to dig in too deep that the wheels would just spin. Um, but I don't we really talked to him. Talk to him some more about it. Sure. See. Maybe the time company would know. Uh, <coughs> yeah. The company that sells it, they should be able to tell you with horsepower and weight that you have. Yeah, horsepower yeah. and the weight. The I'm just all about trying to maximize the usefulness right. of what we have. Yes. I'll ask. I'll ask Greg Parker is to look into that. Okay. See, uh, yeah. Just come back with a with a quote, and uh, you know, I, I just I trust Grizz, but also the company should be able to tell us. You know, they sell them. It's like you need to have this much weight or this much power, those yeah. type of things. Yeah. Okay. If anything, yeah, any, they can get potholes out. It'd be great. Right. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Anything else with the town highway report? Any other? Brian, do you have any other thoughts no, or questions? Me. Guess not. Okay. So, um, <coughs> a town treasurer's report. We're actually sort of on time. <laughs> <laughs> So I had left financial statements, balance sheets for everybody. Um, as far as income, there's been uh, three weeks since our last meeting. So our cash receipts taken in um, was $4,938. Um, that's broken down in between um, land recordings, fleet permits, prepaid taxes, Okay, so um, delinquencies taken in was 
3,000. Hold on just a sec. <laughs> okay, you're not part of the show. I want to participate. <laughs> Chance to, to get center stage here. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's probably at the office door sleeping. Getting ice cream, gee. I need ice cream. Well, I need ice cream. Hey, I need some ice cream. Maybe I should growl too. <laughs> Brian's got a lollipop. Um, so delinquencies. Uh, $3,239.61. Um, because of AP being so high, I did end up transferring uh, 46000 out of the money market into the checking to cover expenses. Um, so yeah, I did end up, uh, there was a bill for um, the school generator. I did take that out of uh, the school, the, um, the money we had for a fund for the, out of the school. But if you guys want to change that, we do have an item line within the general fund for that expense, and I can make that entry depending on what you um, guys choose. That was the that that fee was for one of the the regular service that they did. It wasn't any special. Um... Um, it was combined. It was um, an annual fee, and then there was some work uh, that was done. Okay. Um, and we have, I think, do we have two items in our budget and the general government for the um, the generator? We have, um, obviously we have the propane um, and then we have the, the yearly service fee that we pay. Um, I should look in here myself. I'm trying to remember if we had some money for, um, for maintenance or was it just for the yearly fees that we would pay? Um, folks we have the emergency school fuel tank that's a thousand dollars that okay, so um, that was the fuel the, one that's for the propane then yeah. yep and then school generator um, yeah, we we have zero in the budget for it. Yeah, for this yeah. For this fiscal year, yep, that was a bad idea. Actually, you know, we have um thirteen hundred dollars budgeted right. for that. I thought we had budgeted for uh, um the annual service and inspection fee, which is what that is. Yeah. So I can make that journal. I'll make that journal entry. Okay. And just swap <clears throat> swap out of the. Okay. So yeah. that'll change your do to do from. So that that thirteen hundred dollars, I think, um, I think that's for the that's for the yearly. Is that what pretty much what the yearly fee is? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we don't really have a budget item for any type of repair work or, or maintenance. No. I guess we should create one in um, some yep. point. So so maybe it should come out of that school the school building fund because we don't have anything budgeted for it anywhere. What we'll was the total make, bill? I saw a thousand. I remember a thousand dollars. That was within our budgeted amount. We had thirteen hundred. You said right. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think I think we'll also be getting sometime this year. We'll be getting an invoice for the yearly. Um, you know, it's like like anything else that you right have it, a, it, annual inspection. Service. Annual. Yeah, yeah. I think wasn't that's that, that part of the service, Brandy? I... It was. The bill oh, that we was. ended up, and I don't have it in front of me, the bill right. that we ended up receiving, there was an annual fee of $1,000, but there was also materials. Um, for service. Something that needed to be fixed, a switch okay. or, yeah. Okay. So I suspect that that's already, this this 1,000 was the annual inspection, Mike, is what I think. Yeah. You can tell by just going up, look, it has a new sticker on it, we're good. Yeah, okay. So, um, Maybe Brandy, take a closer look at the invoice, and if if the majority of that is the annual inspection, and you know maybe it's a couple mind. hundred dollars for the parts, or and we're within budget, so yeah, so we should be okay, I think. Um, but if not, um, you know, if there is a 
if there is a um, additional fees, additional, um, <clears throat> we'll use the school fund, I guess, and, and then okay. maybe we look at how we budget it next time around. Anything else? I have one, I actually have one question for you, Brandy. I noticed in the, in the time sheets, um, there was uh, different markings for the virus. Yep. Are, you track, are you tracking when people aren't, aren't there where, where they would normally be working, but because of the way we have the town office, you know, one person at a time there, is that, um, are we, you know, is that just kind of tracking how much we're spending um, dealing with the pandemic within the, the town office? Um, we had received um, a letter from the federal stating that they will reimburse us mm -hmm. um, for this virus time. So okay. I have created an Excel spreadsheet Great. and keeping track of, of everybody's and that's why it's highlighted just so okay. that's good. flagging for me. Yeah, that's what I assume, but um, I just wanted to, because that was kind of new to me to see that. Um, that's good. I'm glad, yep. I'm glad we're doing that. Yeah. Yep. Good job. Excellent. Yep. Good. I, I, now, I saw the thing on the, uh, the talk about being over budget on the highway. What is on the desk there with some yellow highlights? So that's, yeah. that was for me just to give to Greg to keep an eye on things. Everything okay. that was highlighted on the highway is what is over budget already. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because so he had mentioned to me when I talked to him, I met him on the county road here Thursday or Wednesday last week when I was walking, and he had mentioned they were over budget because because apparently the one of the ten wheels is still down at Bassett's waiting for a bed chain, which he said he couldn't afford. And I'm like, you gotta fix the truck. Right. Uh, so no, that was just the item lines that were okay. over budget. Yeah. I mean, once you once you balance out, you can see there's still money in there. But okay. as far as that's kind of what yeah. I thought. Is that, okay. I thought no. you said, well, we yeah. want to need more money to fix the truck. And I'm like, yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, uh, Greg, while I was going over the bills this morning, Greg popped by to drop something off. I showed that to him briefly. I held on to it because I wanted, you know, you, you guys to be able to see that also. I have that copy now here at home and I will, I will bring it to Greg just so that he has it to refer to. So we have some areas overall, overall we're still under budget. It's just some areas we've overspent. Right. Correct. That's, Correct. That's okay. yep. And, you know, part of, I don't know, Brandy, if you have um, part of the budget, you know, the work that we did on the bottom of Cabot Road um, and um, that inventory, I still have to do the reports for those for us to get some, some money yep. back for those two. Yeah. Yep. So, and it's, you know, it's been on my list and every time I almost get to it, there's some <laughs> other kind of yeah. stuff that comes up. Um, <laughs> But um, hopefully, I and mean, I know I've said that at least two or three times now. But, uh, <laughs> Usually you remember, just as you're trying to fall asleep at night, the five things you meant to do today, you didn't do. Yeah. So they're all in a file. I just have to sit down and put it together. But um, hopefully I'll get to it. <laughs> Anything else um, for, the, um, for Brandy at all? Not for me. OK, I'm, I'm good, I think. Okay, um, so um, town clerk's report. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I was waiting for a form from Waterbury to do the final FEMA reimbursement for most of the rest of our money. I found out last week that I didn't need to be waiting for that. So I've got that ready for you to sign tomorrow, Michael, to put in for $58,000 and then they'll only have another, well, the total that's being withheld for the spring uh, reclamation work is uh, $7,000, I think, seven something. So they'll owe us part of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's ready for you to sign and to send in. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I come down with the report to the, for the Washington County Superior Court, I'll, I'll sign it. Okay. All right. <laughs> two, bird, two birds, that's good. Okay. Mask and gloves, of course. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so I do have the purchase and sale agreement for the uh, bachelor land purchase. 
Um, I got a copy of it to Brian and to Paul when they were in today and I emailed you a copy, Michael. It's pretty standard okay. stuff. Okay. Whatever happens, if you agree to sign this, it's still gonna be a while, but we okay. gotta do this to get things started. All right. Um, well, and get Mrs. Bachelor to agree. I mean, they verbally agreed to to the ten thousand dollars, and they've uh, Sandy has hired an attorney, but he seems to be either on. He doesn't. I don't know whether he's not going to his office or what. I was expecting to hear from him, and I haven't heard from him, and she hasn't heard from him. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but, yeah, we'll talk. Uh, the The wetland is on the. Uh, the agenda. Um, oh, sorry. So, so we'll. I yeah. skipped ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. It's okay. Um, How are they coming on the design of the site? I know they worked on that some. Is there anything going to be coming out on that of the old store site? Oh, oh, oh yeah, we did. We got approval for seventy five hundred dollars a grant from the Woodbury Fund to uh, do some fencing, like we did on the other park. And okay. So is that something we can see? What? Are they, they're going to be like a plan drawn up that we can look at or? Well, uh, I, I didn't really hire anybody. I mean, the yes. Oh, no, it's okay. No, I just was wondering. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if Are I you, know that at, at town meeting, there were people that kind of wanted to be involved with that. I mean, it would be kind of a nice community um, project. Um, and I don't know if, I know you've been talking with Russell Richardson. I don't know if he could just come up with a a little um, sketch or something. Or I mean, he did basically. I mean, it's fence in the front. Okay. Hedge hedge like on the other side. A good, a nice specimen tree right in the middle, and on the far side of the stream. You know, I I put in the grant application, a couple thousand dollars to put in a simple footbridge. I don't know whether mm -hmm. that okay. uh, price was reasonable or whether we can do yeah. it for that or whether we should do it, but I just mm -hmm. had to get something into the, sure. for the deadline for April 1st. For the, for the Woodbury. Okay, part. that's fine. Yep. I'm going to ask for people to, uh, when they are cleaning out their gardens this spring, to separate some of their day lilies and come down um, late, you know, later in the spring and plant day lilies along the stream bank. But that'll have to be after we figure out whether we're gonna mm -hmm. do anything with the stream banks. So this still, you know. Okay, so mostly green space, just grass then. Right, yeah, I don't know what else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Do we wanna just kind of put it out on the website or whatever and just let people see it and and if they have any comments? Um, I mean, it, it makes it more complicated, but it does. It hasn't been drawn up. I don't know who yeah. would draw it up, but. Yeah. I the I have the copy of the application uh, mm -hmm. where I explain the different things that were proposed and the prices for the, you know, like the split rail fronts in the front with, with lilac trees similar to what's in the other park. Okay, that would look nice. Okay, yeah price from um, Russell was based on, I mean, I took his prices and I wrote up a, an application. So if anybody else wants to have anything to do with it. No, I'm good. I just was interested in what was going on. The public has any, any other ideas, because I think well, the part on the other side uh, of, the, of the stream is not going to be a lot to work with there, especially if, if the fire department has their parking right up against their yeah, because we're going to do that line adjustment once the FEMA's out. Yeah, we have to do that too. <laughs> that line adjustment. Yeah, I, I, I just remember. We couldn't do that line adjustment, Diana. What? I thought you said we couldn't do a line adjustment. Over. No, the, on the fire department side. Oh, so it's you can not really. On, one side? on the fire department side, it's not moving the line, it's just memorializing right. the line. Just, it's just documenting it correctly according to what the surveyor said. A little it's different not actually moving it. The line is where it is. It's just not well documented is what exactly. I got out of it. Right. The, the reason I was kind of curious about, you know, letting other people in town know about what the plans are is that we did discuss it a little bit at town meeting and there were different people that were asking questions about mm -hmm. public involvement. And then, you know, after the select board meeting, I, I think I, I had a, at least three people come up and just say, oh, I, I would like to be involved. Mm 
Okay. Well, bring your rake. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could have a work. I mean, I know you're already raking and seeding day. So the uh, first thing that's going to have to happen is we're going to have to um, set up that meeting with Jaron Borg. Hopefully, they're still working. I don't yes. know. Um, and decide because any any stream bank uh, repair should be done before we do any of the landscaping. Right. I think I think Jaron um, could come, and I know we had a meeting. Of course, that was before the pandemic, with schedule with Jaron and Shauna. I, I, I can send an email to them and ask them that it, you know, the, the snow is gone now, um, hopefully to stay. But yeah. I think as long as we all keep our physical distance, um, we should yeah. be able to, to mm -hmm. meet there. Plenty of room over there. Yeah, yeah. I'll send them an email and ask them about that. And then the next step will be the contractor coming back with his four inches of topsoil. Uh, Seed and mulch, well, first final grading and then the top. All right, so they, he mulch. does all that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. All right, good enough, thank you. So there'll be plenty of time for people to <clears throat> weigh in and have other ideas about landscaping. Mm -hmm. Okay. They can do that. All right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it, I mean, Peter was the one but, that brought it up, and he's the one that was involved with me and Russell right, and coming I up. I understand with that, me. but I mean, people have been waiting f so long to see that thing gone yeah. that um, you know now that it is gone, and, and it was mm -hmm. kind of interesting to see that other people in the community were interested in, in yeah. being involved with making it something new. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, Michael, we have a uh, caller uh, um, who wants to be admitted into the meeting. Okay, can, can uh, you give that person's name? There's no name. The last three numbers are four, five, two. Oh, that's it's Paul, Paul Council. Council. That's Paul Council. I'll let them yes. in. Yeah, let them in. And let's let them introduce themselves. Right. Hi, who is this on the phone? This, this is Paul Council. Thank you. Hello, Paul. Hello. Hello. I'll hit star six and listen in. Okay, we're, we're just about ready to get to the Cranberry Met Meadow Wetlands. So, um, Diana, do you have anything else for the town clerk report at all? Well, like I explained to you, we're trying to uh, stagger our work in the town office so that mm -hmm. there's only one of us there at a time. But on Monday, Laura and I both work if she doesn't have to, if she can be there. Tuesday, I work by myself. Wednesday, Laura works by herself. Thursday, I work by myself. And Brandy has Friday, Saturday. So that's what we're doing for now. And we seem to be uh, satisfying the needs of most people. Mm -hmm. Is that working out for you too, Brandy, the schedule that, that you guys have got set up? Yes. Yep. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. Um, Anything else, Diana? No, oh, caught up on my my land records recording. Wow! First time since Perfect. January. <laughs> <laughs> it's the silver lining of the pandemic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet days. Yeah. 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 It can get pretty crazy in the town office sometimes. Mm. I've seen it that way. Anything else? Well, we have uh, some, there have been some attorneys who wanted to come in and do title searches. And mm -hmm. I noticed all other town clerks are all saying no. So I've been trying to say no, but if they can point me specifically to something they need, I'm willing to look it up and mm -hmm. scan it and send it to them. And that's mm -hmm. been satisfactory so far. Okay, that's a good, sounds like a good solution. I mean, we always, they always warn us that town clerks aren't supposed to be looking in the land records for things, but as the attorneys know that, you know, we're not certifying anything, we're just uh, making right. copies. So. And I think, you know, with what we're dealing with now, that's a rule that can get bent a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Also, anything else? I don't think so. Okay. So um, let's move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the Cranberry Meadow Wetland. Um, and uh, I 
I realized after the fact, um, uh, Paul brought it up to me that, um, you know, at our last meeting, um, we voted to accept the wetland, um, basically the donation um, of the wetland from as town property, but it wasn't warned on the meeting. Um, so this time around, um, so we really should re-vote on that. And, and if there's anything to be discussed, discuss that also um, to, to what, as whether or not um, this piece of property, um, uh, which is being offered to us uh, as a donation, um, if we're willing to accept it as town property. Um, yep. And I know Paul, you had some issues um, that uh, I know I, that I, some people in town brought up. So, you know, if, if you would like to- Sure, sure. I had one person just was concerned that they had been interested in the property and didn't, I, is there, it was more that like, well, they just wanted a chance to buy it and we didn't, didn't know the town was trying to get it. So I said, all right, well, we'll put it on the, the warning so that the person has an opportunity to come discuss it which is what we've done so yeah and was was that bj yes okay i i i had a, a a good half hour discussion with bj and his wife denise um about that um and you know his main cons you know his of course he lives right there and right, he, he wants to be able to use the land yeah yeah he wants to use the land and i assured him that there would be no restrictions on the use of the land at all, it wouldn't be posted. You know, he likes to be on the water in the in the wetland area, and he likes to deer hunt in the woods um, on the back side of it. You know, I assured him that it would be town property. That's public property. You know, we really can't and wouldn't post it. I did explain to him that we probably would have some conservation easements on it, similar to the town wetland, um, just to you know to try to protect the the um, you know the rare plants and other things that are that are there and and where those are you you really have to you I mean you're basically walking on floating mats of uh, vegetation right. it's, it's not like everybody goes out there and um so um i think that they'll be pretty safe but, so, and they seemed okay with that after, after okay after. very good yeah and I, as i said i i just thought it was proper that we warned it and if, if mm -hmm. one, one of them wanted to come participate in the meeting then they can be here here we are Good. So, so I know that things. you can uh, you can decide whether or not you want to proceed with uh, accepting the property, and then whether you are ready to sign the purchase and sale agreement that I provided to you today. Okay. Well, I know that Andy and Paul are here for this subject, so I'd like to give them an opportunity to to speak if they wish to. So, Andy, do you have anything to say? You uh, unmute yourself or <laughs> Andy? Yeah. You have to okay. Oh, no, you're, 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 okay. <laughs> you're good. Andy. Okay. Um no, I, I, I wanted just to to listen. I wasn't okay. aware of um any of the uh not complaints, but any of the um issues that people had about it. So I wanted to hear what what people were worried about. Yeah, I, I think the the main issue was a neighbor who of of the property who um, was thinking also that they would they would like to to buy the land, um, and I think you know once I, I spoke with them and assured them that they would still have full use of the land as as they have had, um, th they were okay with the town buying it. And I also had a conversation, and as I said, the best I can do is we'll re revisit it at a Warren meeting. And if you have ob objections, just come, come participate in the meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, I, hey, Mike, go ahead, I, Paul. Yeah, this is Paul Council. Hi, Paul. Um, Hello. And Brian and Diane. Paul. Um, I just wanted to mention, as far as BJ's concerns about deer hunting, um, considering that rare plants are the primary concern for the people who want to protect that piece of property, um, the, the, an overabundance of deer is the worst enemy of rare plants. Right. I've, talked to, I've talked to a number of professional botanists and they recognize that a lot of them feel there's too many deer as it, as it is right now. So I can't imagine, um, given that, that deer hunting will ever be curtailed on the place. 
Yeah, that's great. Because I, again, my, I agree with all that is that if the town's going to buy it, it needs to be available to use by the town. So mm -hmm. I concur. Yep. So, yeah, that's just, that's just a thought that I had over the course yep. of the day. So I'm going to hit star six and let you folks have at it. And, and All right. For, Thank you. Thanks for allowing me to participate. And uh, next time, maybe I'll be on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk later. All right. So any more, any more discussion? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. okay. Diana? Uh, like I said, this, this purchase and sale agreement is pretty much standard uh, language. Um, it includes uh, $10,000 that's being offered. Uh, it says that before the closing, the buyer has to perfect the title. And there is an issue with these other people's names who are on the title and those people are dead. And they we can't find where they have actually signed over their portion. I mean, the woman's been dead since like early this century, like 2003, and the husband was dead in the 80s, and, and so they're long gone, but their names are still on the property, so it's going to take some time to straighten that out. Mm -hmm. okay. But once we get, a, once we get this uh, purchase and sale agreement signed, then the Medicaid processing can go through for Mrs. Batchelder, and they allow a year for the sale to actually be finalized. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And anything else, Diana? Well, like I said, you, if you want to make it all formal, you can vote on two things. You can vote that right. you agree that the town should acquire the property. It's not going to cost us hardly anything. Mm -hmm. um, and that you agree to let Michael sign the purchase and sale agreement. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion. I'll make two motions, I guess. Um, so um, I would make a motion that um, we accept um, what I'm basically calling a donation of, of land on, on Cranberry, this Cranberry Meadow wetland um, and accept it to become um, town property as soon as we work through the, the deed and, and are able to purchase it. Um, or allow the donator to purchase it. Um, well, just to, just to be clear, there are two options. One is the money would be donated to the conservation fund, and we and the town would buy the property. The other okay. one is that the donor could buy the property and donate it to the town. So okay. I've asked her to check with her tax people and see which one would be more in right. advantageous. Yeah, because I'd hate to have to pay fees twice if it doesn't work out, you know. Right. Yeah. Or her and pay, and then we pay, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah and if she if she makes it as a to donation, that's a tax deduction. I mean, the town is considered a nonprofit, and um, I would assume so. Yeah. And the conservation fund would. So either way. Um, either way. So let me try to simplify that first motion. I I make a motion that that um, that we accept the cranberry meadow wetland. Um, as a, as a donation to the town and that we um, that we consider the uh, Cranberry Meadow wetland as town property in the future once it is purchased. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then um, I'll make a second motion that we um, allow myself um, to be to sign the uh, purchase and sales agreement to begin the process of um, uh, selling, buying this uh, wetland, Cranberry Meadow wetland property. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. All right, so there's any other, any other discussion about that before we move on? I'd like to say to the, if anybody in the public has other questions about how any of this came about, I'd be happy to. I haven't okay. taken the time to write it all down as a story, but I'd be happy to explain it to anybody who okay. has questions about any part of it. Okay. All right. I got one question, Diana. <clears throat> Approximately how much is this taking off the tax rolls? People might ask that. Well, you know, when this, 
bachelors have been religiously paying on a too high assessment for many years and they were paying about eight hundred dollars seven or eight hundred dollars a year now that the listers have agreed that that was a mistake but nobody questioned it when the the uh re the uh 2007 reappraisal that was done by an outside company they just looked at that like a piece of open land yeah when the listers looked at it again and they printed out a map to show how steep that woodland is and how much of everything that's not steep is wet and uh, based on that price we're talking about uh, uh, probably two or three hundred dollars of taxes okay so not much not much no. Not a lot. In the grand scheme. Okay. 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 Anything else about that? Okay. So let's let's move on. Um, so a select board assistant, that is um, Laura Daly. Um, I realized uh, recently that when we worked on the fiscal year twenty one budget, and we bumped everyone up. Um, uh, on the pay scale, um, we did not bump up our assistant um, select board, select board assistant. Um, and right at the moment, um, she's receiving a wage of $15 and 45 cents an hour for her work as a select board assistant. Um, and with a, if we had thought to bump her up on the scale for fiscal year 21, um, she would be getting um, $15 and 94 cents. Um, so I would like to make sure that we do at least that um, for the next fiscal year. But also, um, you know, I, I know with this work um, with Zoom and just other things that happen to require um, computer work or just the different things that Laura has kind of taken on um, <coughs> to assist the select board or even the, the town highway department. Um, I would really like to bump her up uh, two pay scales to a $16 and 39 cents an hour. So one, one pay scale to just to get her in speed with everyone else who got a bump up for fiscal year 21. And then another pay scale is kind of a merit um, award to her. I'm just throwing this out and um, it's just the thought that I've had, and, and I'm glad to hear you know what what you, Paul or Brian, have you know think of this, and Diana too, for that matter. Yep, based on that chart that's in the personnel yes. policy. Yep. yep, that's what we follow now. Yeah, in the personnel policy. And so that, but so everybody gets uh gets their next grade on July first, right? That, yes, that's that's what um, that's the way we've been doing it for the last few years. Right. So this is just the same. Are you just giving her an extra one, or? Well, we we we, we, we yes, um, we oversaw. We didn't. We kind of overlooked Laura being part of that. Um, mm -hmm. As I, I'm talking only as a select board assistant. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want you to know, say she's that she's also the assistant town clerk, and that's under your your um wings yeah well, i would object to have her having a raise there too so okay i'm not objecting to what you propose so i'll second that if you're making that a motion okay uh, brian do you do you have any no nope, no problems with it at all it's good all idea. right okay um so i would make a motion that we um and diana do you want to include this for as assistant town clerk or i don't i don't know what she's getting paid now well, she's getting paid less as the assistant town clerk than she is as a select yeah. board assistant. Yeah. It's a, I think it's fourteen something dollars yeah. an hour. She so. probably should make at least fifteen dollars as a. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. So we'll we'll just vote on the select board assistant, and then you 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 know you're welcome to to determine what what you would like to to pay her um, as your assistant. Okay. Okay. So um, I would make a motion that the uh, um that we um, bump uh, Laura Daly up um, two steps on the uh, pay scale in the uh, personnel policy from $15.45 an hour to uh, $16.39 an hour. And I'll second that. 
I'll and then she would receive her customary uh, increase again in July, correct? If we're doing this as a meritorious. Yes, it, the, right. one of the increases is the for fiscal year 21, which would be- Which she's been missing for months, okay. And then the other would be um, a, a kind of a merit. A meritorious, and then July 1st, she'll get her standard. Okay, yep, I second that. Okay. Uh, Brian, any thoughts or? Oh, nope, I'll go to that. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Good. All right, so um, the next thing on our agenda is, uh, let me find it. Um, here it is. Hold it up on my other computer here. Okay. Um, so this is the uh, Central Vermont Humane Society 2020 contract. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty much the same every year. Um, and I did get an email from Kim Silk. Um, he, you know, with his school board stuff, uh, he's, he's and still working full time, he's Said he's running pretty ragged, so uh, he isn't joining us tonight. But he he did he did say that the contract was okay. Okay. So getting his blessing on it, I feel okay, and and also approving it. Um, so I would like to, and, and any discussion at all about that from? No, it's just accepted. I have read through it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I would like to make a motion that we approve the Central Vermont Humane Society. 2020 contract. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So I will sign this and we'll get it to um, the Central Vermont Humane Society. Um, the next thing on the agenda is um, the Woodbury stormwater final designs, uh, a memorandum of, of, I have understanding on the agenda, but it's actually a memorandum of agreement, which right. I guess is kind of the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> So the, this mem memorandum of um, agreement is for the um, four projects, the stormwater erosion projects um, that are will happen sometime in the future in the village. Um, one on Ch Church Street, one uh, behind the annex building, um, one up off the school parking lot, um, and then one over between the post office and the fire station. Um, and so this, this is a grant that we received um, actually from two different entities, the Department um, of Environmental Conservation and also a, a grant from another regional planning commission that had extra money. Uh, apparently that's what they do if they have get grant money for particular projects, if, if they aren't able to use it all, um, they offer it out to other regional planning commissions. Um, and what we, it was a matching grant. So we would be, um, with this particular um, grant, we would be, uh, where is that? Um, oh. Hang on a second. We are $5,958 right, our match. Yeah. I just found it, yeah. So we would, we would be matching um, roughly $6,000 um, for this match of a, you know, um, and a lot of that will be in kind and it will be mostly um, my time participating in meetings and all. Um, there will be a cash, there is a cash amount of $2,200 that um, we will be required to pay. And, um, and, and I, you know, if, if I'm not, depending on how much in kind, um, you know, through my time involved, and I've already started tracking my time, um, we may, there may be some cash from that also. Um, I wish I could charge as much as the uh, engineers that are getting- yeah, that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a whole section of road design for a couple thousand bucks. <laughs> I, I, I'm only allowed to charge $20 now, which I- Oh seems my. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So my question on this, Michael, is, it, is yes. it possible that when they're working on this design that they could give us some kind of idea on maintenance of these things once they're in? Yes, um, the, the award for the grant was given to Dubois and King. And one of the things that they mentioned in, um, in their RFP for the, uh, to, to, um, for the grant or whatever they sent in, the, the, bid, the bid statement, was that they, um, they have ideas on ways um, of not maybe doing the design exactly as we see in the original um, survey, the 30% designs mm -hmm. that were done. And mm -hmm. one of the things they have in mind is the maintenance of these things. Right, because that was a concern, like um, 
Mm -hmm. We always we're, we get the parking lot. It's not going to get washed down this year because we're tearing it up, but we always clean off the parking lot. If we're going to, we are going to want to do that with these type of things. We're going to have to pay to sweep the parking lot in yeah. the, once these go in. And I just, I think part of the conversation of whether they will put them in in the future is the annual maintenance cost of the thing. So yeah, and that, that is one of, okay. yeah, and I was, I was really happy to see Dubois and King mention that. The other yeah. company that bid on it didn't mention that at all. I mean, they're, <clears throat> they're obviously boots on the ground. They know, you know, yeah. um, and there will be some public, at least one, if not, more public meetings or meetings with the select board okay. where the public is able to come where um, the, the steps are to come up with a 60% design and then there'll be public input um, and then a 90% design again with public input um, and then the 100% design is the final project. Okay. Yeah because that'd be a big if I'm still sitting in this chair when uh, when the time comes to actually do it that'd be right. a big part of the cons right. uh, my consideration is yeah. how much is it going to cost to maintain it. Yeah. And obviously when, you know, these designs are, once they are finished, then we have the tool of the paperwork in hand to, mm. to, for the implementation, which again will be through a grant process. Sure. And yeah. Okay. One or two at a time, you know, um, w w I have no idea what that will, and it's, right. it is years, it, you know, it's a few right. years down the road. Maybe someone else has had a. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so, so this, um, and if, if you've had a chance to look at the memorandum of agreement yeah, yeah. Um, and you're you're okay with it, well, um, what I would like us to do as a select board is approve the signing of the memorandum of agreement um, and then um, the, the design work should start soon. Um, okay. Okay. So I would, I would make a motion that we approve um, the memorandum of agreement um, for the Woodbury stormwater final designs um, that are being overseen by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Paul? Oh, go ahead, Brian. Your turn. <laughs> okay, all in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, um, the last thing on the agenda is just, um, I thought maybe we, you know, give us a chance to talk a little bit more about um, the pandemic and town response. Um, you know, I, I have a, some items there, but it, you know, to, we don't really have to do them in any kind of order. Um, I have, um, I just wanted to mention that I have a, um, the forms and kind of things on paper for the, the Woodbury resident volunteers and needs list. And we did generate some names on that needs list at our last select board meeting. I have it all on paper. Um, I haven't really put it together as a, an entity. That's another thing that's on my, list to do um, this week probably um, and I just wondered you know if especially Paul or Brian with your experience with other kind of town mm -hmm. emergencies if there are any thoughts that you've had on any other things that we might want to um, think about or like anticipated needs that's what that's kind of addressing it it does seem that um, as far as Vermont's reaction with the pandemic that um, I know I heard on some of the governor's um, things that he's been having um, that now they're looking at that, like maybe there isn't gonna be this spike that maybe it's kind of reached a plateau and maybe it'll just kind of continue as a plateau and then start dropping. I mean, it's all an unknown and, and speculation, but. I suspect over the next several weeks, you'll see them to start opening some things back up. It's kind of what the governor hinted at, what that's gonna look like, I don't know. We haven't seen a huge need, I mean, the reality is the ambulance has picked back up starting about last Thursday. Mm -hmm. The calls had dropped 75% um, medically. And then the fire department, we've been experiencing maybe 60 to 70% drop in call volumes in March and April. Uh -huh. um, so that's really the reality is nobody's really reached out for anything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it'll slowly start to pick back up again. People were terrified to go to the hospital, have anybody come around so it's not calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so, and I, I, I think um, the last statement that the uh, governor made is that, you know, things are gonna be pretty much shut down to May 15th now. So we can anticipate at least two more- A couple more meetings, meetings. yep. <laughs> this way, um, and it seemed to work out okay. I, the, I'm the yes. one that, 
had the most problems and I'm not really not sure why. Um, I have so many work. I had like six or eight work meetings like this last week. So I'm getting to be a pro at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple, couple next week. Um, and Two or three day, for a couple of days. Yeah. With the, um, with the account that we set up, the town account, that Zoom account that we set up, um, I know the planning commission is planning on meeting next Monday. Um, the conservation commission is go is planning on meeting this Thursday, um, and you know it is available to any of the other like the listers or the auditors if if they um, need to meet or want to meet. Um, so, and I know the library. Um, Brandy asked me today about uh, you know could the library use the town account to hold a meeting, and and I said sure. I don't see why not. Um, That's good. So yeah, so um, I got that all set up and scheduled for Wednesday at one. Great, and Laura, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna need your help um, setting up for the conservation commission uh, meeting. So maybe I'll call down to you on Wednesday when you're at the town office, or try to connect with you um, tomorrow if you think we should try to set it up sooner. If you just send me the time and date, I can set it up and then send you the invite. And then if you log in as the Woodbury Select Board. Uh -huh. then you'll automatically it'll pop right up it'll say start meeting and you just start the meeting okay well um can i would you like me to t tell you the time and date right now you can just send it to me in an email okay i'll send it to you in an email All perfect right. great good um so yeah that's that's pretty much it on the agenda anything so i had a question i forgot to ask really i noticed that the speed sign is broken coming Yes. Headed north into the village. Is there something we know we can do to fix that? Uh, I think um, I asked, I thought that Greg had the uh, the uh, information booklets for that. I asked him about it and he said no, that they're at the town office and that Laura would know where they are. Oh. I have, I have all the access to all the information about that. I haven't gone down there with the laptop to try and see if I could diagnose okay. it with it, but that's right. something and, I can do. Okay. And Laura, Laura gave me the phone number of somebody to call to come and service it, but maybe Laura, if, if we try, you know, if they, if there is a way you can access it with a laptop and it might be a, like a troubleshooting thing or could tell you what's wrong with it, um, that would be great. Um, yeah, if she can, then we'll just get someone down to yeah, fix then it. Then we'll just call, yeah, we'll just, we'll just call the service. I've been aware of that too and asked yeah, Laura. Me too, I keep thinking of it. I never, I was like, hey, wait. <laughs> That's all this, but yeah, we should we should get that working again. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else at all? I'm good. Okay. I'm good. All right. So I would like to make a motion um, at seven thirty nine um, that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you very much for. Thank you, everybody. Time.